In today's tutorial, we are going to talk about the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is one of the most important but often overlooked parts of the human body. It acts as a waste disposal system. It collects excessive fluid from tissues and returns it back into the bloodstream. It also plays a vital role in transporting nutrients and it helps the immune system fight infections. Now, although it works closely with the circulatory system, the lymphatic system is separate and has its own network of vessels, nodes, and organs. So why do we need the lymphatic system or why should we learn about the lymphatic system? Number one is fluid balance. It prevents fluid from building up in tissues by collecting excessive fluids and returning it back into the blood. Number two, nutrient transport. It helps to move large molecules like hormones and fat into the bloodstream. Then number three is immune protection. It detects and removes bacteria, viruses and other harmful invaders to protect the body from infections. So without the lymphatic system, our tissues would swell with excessive fluid and our body would struggle to absorb certain nutrients or fight infections effectively. So, one other question. Where does the lymph come from? To understand the lymph, let us first look into blood circulation. So, blood is constantly moving from the arteries, the veins and capillaries. So, the arteries carries oxygen-rich blood from the heart to the body, while the veins bring poor oxygenated blood to the heart. So, the smallest vessels are called the capillaries and they have thin walls that allow fluid, nutrients and gases to pass through. Now these walls of the capillaries are important because it allows oxygen and nutrients to reach the tissues. Now the only problem is the process is not perfect as blood flow through the capillaries around 20 liters of fluid actually leak out into the surrounding tissues every day and only 17 liters are reabsorbed into the capillaries and the remaining 3 liters are stuck in the tissues. If they are not removed, they can cause swelling, which is also called edema. So now, this takes us to the rows of the lymphatic vessels. So these extra 3 liters of fluid are collected by lymphatic capillaries. They are tiny vessels found throughout the body. Now, once the fluid enters the vessels, it is called the lymph. So once this fluid enters into the lymphatic vessels, its name changes to lymph. So unlike blood, the lymph is actually colorless or you can call it pale and it does not contain any red blood cell. So how does the lymph move? The circulatory system has the heart to pump blood but the lymphatic system on the other hand does not have a pump. So instead, the lymph moves through the body because of number one, muscle movement. This is when we breathe, when we exercise, our muscles squeeze and the lymphatic vessels push the lymph forward. Another one is the pulsing of arteries. Nearby arteries pulse with each heartbeat, gently moving the lymph along. Then number three is the one-way valve. The lymphatic vessels have valves that keep the lymph from flowing backward. This ensures it moves in the right direction. So it's actually a slow and steady movement, but eventually it returns the lymph to the blood cell. So let's talk about the lymphatic vessels and ducts. Lymph does not flow randomly. It flows through a specific pathway through different type of lymphatic vessels. Number one is the lymphatic capillaries. They are actually small thin walled vessels that collect lymph from tissues. Then number two is the larger lymphatic vessels. Now this transports lymph towards the heart. And then there is the lymphatic trunk. They collect lymph from larger regions of the body and then finally there is the lymphatic duct. They are the final destination before the lymph is returned to the bloodstream. Now, there are actually two major lymphatic ducts. The first one is the right lymphatic duct and it drains the lymph from the right arm, right chest and the right side of the head. So as you can see it's called the right lymphatic duct and it drains the right hand, the right chest and the right side of the head. Then the second major lymphatic duct is the thoracic duct. It is the 
actually the largest lymphatic vessel and it drains the rest of the body apart from the right arm, the right chest and the right side of the head. So both limbs actually empty themselves into the veins of the neck where it rejoins into the bloodstream. So how does the lymphatic system help with nutrition? One of the lymphatic system's lesser known function is helping in nutrient absorption, especially fats. So in the small intestine, a special lymphatic vessel called lacteals absorb dietary fats. Now these fats are packaged into chylomicrons which travel through the lymphatic system before entering the blood. Now, the lymph inside the lacteals are actually milky white because of the fat and it gives the vessel their name lacteals which comes from milky. So without these vessels, the body would struggle to absorb fat and fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E and K which is ADEC. So let's talk about the lymphatic system and immunity. So a major role of the lymphatic system is fighting infections. It does this using a lymphoid organ, which include number one, the lymph node. The lymph nodes are small bean-shaped structures that are found along the lymphatic vessels. They act as filters, removing bacteria, viruses, and other harmful substances. And there are actually hundreds of lymph nodes in the body, but most noticeable are the one found in the neck, the armpit, and the groin. So, inside each lymph node are immune cells like B cells and T cells and they attack harmful invaders. The number two is the spleen. The spleen is actually the largest lymphoid organ and it is located on the left side of the body near the stomach. So, this is actually an exam question. The spleen is the largest lymphoid organ and where is it located? The left side of the body near the stomach. So, it helps to filter blood. It stores platelets and it produces antibodies to fight infections. The number three is the thymus. The thymus is actually a small organ in the upper chest behind the breastbone. It is important in childhood because it helps in the development of T cells which help in fighting infections. So as we age, the thymus actually shrinks and, and it becomes less active. The number four is the tonsils. The tonsils form a protective ring tissue around the throat and they trap bacteria and viruses from fruit and air, preventing infection from spreading. There are actually two types of tonsils. There is the palatine tonsil, that is the one we can see in our throat. There is the adenoid tonsil, which are higher in the throat, and then the lingual tonsil, which is at the base of the tongue. The tonsils can sometimes become swollen or infected and this condition is called tonsillitis. Now, what happens when the lymphatic system fails? Now, if the lymphatic system does not work properly, it can lead to serious health conditions such as lymph edema which is swelling due to fluid buildup often in the arms or in the legs. Then another thing is it can lead to infections, a weak lymphatic system makes it harder to fight germs then number three cancer can spread you know cancer cells can actually travel through lymphoid vessels and express the disease to other parts of the body so in conclusion the lymphatic system is essential for maintaining fluid balance absorbing fats nutrients and also it defends the body against infection so even though it works quietly in the background it actually plays a huge role in keeping us healthy and disease free so if you like this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe for more videos like this see you next time and thanks for watching